as we begin our watercolor painting, it's going to be critical that we recognize the values. We need to ensure that we keep and maintain the light values throughout the work, as we then will develop darker values by layering colors of watercolor. A trick to make your values lighter is to add water to the surface of your painting first. Then, mixing your color, make a very light version of the color by adding more water. That is not light enough, you can use a paper towel to make it even lighter. Paper towel is always a good thing to have on hand as it can also dry up mistakes if you catch them while they're still wet. Having a moistened surface will also allow you to blend colors much more effectively, either blending from a dark color to a light value or blending from one color into another. Having moisture and using water will come in handy, but blending on a dry surface is much more challenging. However, if you want to create detailed lines, it is critical that the surface be dry. Painting on a dry surface with well-mixed paint will allow you to make pinpoint accurate lines. You can make very detailed work if you have the right consistency and a good brush. However, if you were to paint that same tree or detail on a wet surface, you'll notice that the result is a disaster and the paint will bleed, creating a much less detailed and precise tree or detail. We want to study the value of the colors. That will be one of the hardest challenges to recognize that each color has its own value, how dark or how light it is. The blue by itself is a very dark color. It can be lightened with water as illustrated earlier, and it can be made darker still with black. When adding black, we must be sure that the black is rich, because adding a gray will not end up making your blue any darker will just make it look more gray. To be successful with this assignment, we're going to need to paint an array of values from light to dark, being able to add water and lighten, and gradually mixing the paint darker, adding more pigment to create value steps. Similar to what we did with our portrait, we will need the value to create the accurate sense of space in three dimension in our work. By adding value, we'll be able to develop form and depth. It will be important for you to study your artwork, to recognize the different values, and to gradually develop darker values so that you can create an accurate replication of the artwork. Here, by adding blue, I've created six distinct values from light to dark. I will now add more dark by incorporating black. My goal with adding black is not to create a distinct black, but in fact to make a dark blue. So I'm mixing a rich, saturated pigment of blue with black. And that will give me three additional values, ranging from very dark, near black, to very light blue. Because our middle section is going to be a complementary color scheme, it will be essential that we're able to blend from one color to another. We want to avoid having abrupt lines, in particular at any of our divisions. 
And one of the biggest challenges will be matching the value of one color to the value of the other. In order to blend effectively, we're going to need this blue to be the same value as the orange. And then we carefully blend the two colors from one to the other, trying to maintain the same value and producing an even transition through the neutral colors. Keeping a clean paintbrush will help with this. Avoid mixing black or any other color directly into your paint tray as this can make the colors on your tray very dirty and make your overall painting look dingy. Let's take a moment to discuss the paintbrushes you have available. This is a flat paintbrush. A flat paintbrush is useful for painting edges. You only paint in two directions, pulling the bristles down, sideways, or up. This will create great sharp edges. But you never want to drag this brush sideways or push this brush. This is a round paintbrush. You have several in different sizes. This will allow you to create detail. You should always pull a paintbrush in one of two directions. Never drag it sideways, push, or poke, as these will destroy your paintbrush. These larger round brushes can be useful for blending and doing larger washes, as they will hold a lot of pigment or water and again, you want to pull the paintbrush so that the tip stays together, trying to avoid having the bristles come apart or pushing it in any way that will damage the paintbrush. Now that this surface is dried, you'll see that we are able to come back and paint precise details. This is why I recommend painting all of your light values first as you'll be able to paint over top of them with darker values after they have dried. With painting, we want to avoid having outlines and instead look at the areas of value and color. To begin, I'm going to start with the lighter values, in particular looking at areas that spread through several zones on my page. I will then add moisture to the surface and try to make sure my values are the appropriate lightness. In the middle, I'm choosing a complementary color scheme of red and green. So I must match the value of red to green. While the paper is wet, I'm able to incorporate my analogous color scheme, blending from red into orange and blending from green into blue. I want a smooth transition from one side to the other. I will then proceed to work on other areas which have light values and spread from one zone into the other, trying to match the value accurately and starting to incorporate some of my analogous yellow oranges and yellows. We will then gradually start to define some of the darker areas, starting to create some texture in the work, blending from greens to reds, working from the middle section outward, using my reference drawing to help determine where all of the various values and details are going to be painted. I 
I gradually build up some of the darker values. All the while being careful to ensure that the light values stay light enough. I avoid painting much detail at this stage. I can now begin to incorporate more dark values using a rich blend of green I'm able to create a contrast and can enhance the work with more detail Painting detail on dry paper, then using a damp paintbrush, I'm able to blend some of those areas to create a more natural look. In order to create sharp edges, it's critical that your paper is dry. In order to create dark colors, it's also critical that your paper is dry. If your paper is wet in any way, it will actually water down and lighten the pigment. For the darkest areas, I will first try to make them as dark as possible with my chosen pigment before I add any black or any other color. Working carefully, I try to match the shapes of values, the lights and darks, try to create some of the textures but as accurately as possible, I'm creating the shapes, not thinking about them so much as trees in this scenario or rocks, but thinking specifically about shapes of light and dark and looking at the textures and doing my best to paint those in. trying to paint what I see as opposed to what I think I should be painting. I'm able to create trees that look much more realistic than my preconceived notion of a tree. With the cool colors, you're able to create very dark values by mixing the paint and using minimal amounts of water. Avoid mixing too much water into your paint as this can create lighter values and it can make it much harder to control the detail of your work.
I'm now working towards the middle. Determining how I will blend from red into green. Still using green just to enhance. By adding even more green, I can further saturate and develop more detail. I recommend always having a paper towel handy, repeatedly cleaning your brush you can use the paper towel to further dry up areas where you might have added too much water or have gone too dark. Now proceed to work in red, developing some of the darker values and details. Avoiding painting into any of the highlight areas. Enhancing the work with texture, gradually developing the darker values. Trying accurately to mimic the values. Then by incorporating red and mixing with green, you'll notice I can produce very dark values. A very dark, warm brown. With the warm colors, it will be harder to produce darks. The red is your darkest value. So I'm using this in my analogous to produce some of the darker values. Trying to create the textures looking at the overall shapes of these areas of value. Continuing to develop details. Trying my best to accurately replicate the shapes and textures I see in the work of art.
making the red as dark as possible before I add any additional black. As I paint into the background, being sensitive to the values by keeping these values nice and light, I'm able to create a convincing sense of depth. Deciding how I will transition from red to green now painting red over top of some of my darker greens, I'm able to create much darker colors and create some interesting effects. The combination of a saturated red over top of green will produce a very dark neutral. To do this, you will need to avoid making watery colors. To achieve maximum effect, you'll need a rich, saturated red over top of a saturated green. But you can effectively create some softer neutrals. You can use the contrasting color to create and enhance textures within your work. Blending carefully, I'm trying to achieve a seamless transition from my red monochromatic into my green section. Now I am incorporating black, using it in the same manner as red to create the darkest values in my green monochromatic section. This can dramatically enhance your work if you ensure that the black is saturated and rich. To begin, I add black and then use a rich green to blend and produce dark greens. We want to ensure that the greens all look green as opposed to having black areas or gray areas within our work. Be careful never to mix the black paint directly into your green paint tray or any other paint tray as this will make all of your future colors look very dark and dingy. I'm keeping the black separate and always washing my brush before I revisit the green paint. By darkening these values, I'm able to enhance the contrast This creates a much more bold painting. As I move into the analogous cool section, I'm using a rich saturated blue paint in the same manner as the black paint. By layering this paint on top of my dark green, I produce very dark, cool blue-green colors which will both give me contrast of value and variety of color. I'm now continuing to add and enhance the work using my analogous colors of blue and violet. Using the colors I can create different textures, 
paying close attention to the values to ensure that I keep the light values light enough while developing some of the darker values in the painting. Using water effectively, I can blend some of the more organic, soft areas and working on a dry surface will allow me to enhance the detail. Now moving to the red monochromatic section and adding black, again keeping the black paint separate from my red paint tray to maintain pure pristine red colors going over some of those darkest darks, then blending with red paint to produce dark red colors. Because I cannot achieve the dark effect with red alone, I'm incorporating some black sparingly into my analogous warm section, gradually developing the darker colors, incorporating more of the analogous warm colors, orange and yellow, into the work, enhancing the darker values, blending together to develop the textures and details. Bringing more color into the work using yellows, oranges, red orange to achieve maximum effect and gradually over time producing a painting with depth and form, utilizing the color schemes and value effectively. I can produce the painting to achieve maximum effect.